Well, that mantra, <clears throat> I agree and disagree, because that mantra, everybody's been heard it a million times. The new mantra in terms of biotechnology and medicine is that there's three companies right now, Vivas, Arena, and Rexogen. Vivas has, a, I think, stage three trials in uh, a drug which combines Topamax, which is actually a migraine medicine, with fenteramine. That seems to have... Fen Fen. It's actually Topamax is it's fenteramine, which is Fen Fen. Then Fenforamine is, is not there, but we have Topamax acting like that other portion. Okay. Now you've got another company called Arena, which has a serotonin, maybe a drug like the uh, Fenforamine out there. And it's supposed to be maybe a little bit safe, I don't know, but there's, <clears throat> this is all a little speculation. They're a little bit behind in the, if you look at the FDA trial race, and then you've got Rexogen Corporation, and that's the three. However, what is most interesting is the melanocort receptors, <clears throat> like three and four, I think three or four. And if you look at those receptors, there was actually <laughs> melanotan, which was Chris Heward, the late Chris Heward, worked with that molecule. This molecule affected sexuality, and it's still, you can, there's a lot of data show women's sexuality goes up. It's the only central nervous system drug that it, it ca causes a penis to, to get big or engorgement of the clitoris. It's a melanocort system which are these, we got endocannabinoid system, which is Ramona bond, which was in Europe. It never made it to America. It was in the endocannabinoid system. So we got endocannabinoid system, uh, it should be explored. We've got these uh, melanocortin receptor system, which Merck is working on. And we have these three drug companies close to maybe getting approved in a year or two. So there's a few things in the biopharmaceutical arena other than the mantra we already know about. Um, you, know the side, you know what the side effects are? Uh, Carlos? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, side effects of? The, the, wait, well, if they're in stage three, they've, they've, they've more or less, uh, you know, fenteramine has a little stimulatory effect. Uh, Topamax, if you use it for migraines, well, I, I'm sure there's side effects on everything, but they're able to get to stage three, and uh, so they are, um, you know, they've passed the, big, the biggest hurdles. I don't know if they have an, a, a new drug application yet. But the other thing that's really interesting if you, is lipodystrophy treatment, which is going on right now. The Montreal company called Theragenics, they've got Tessamorlin. They're, they've got an NDA right now. Tessamorlin is a long-acting growth hormone releasing hormone. It's like, I can't remember, 84. It's a long-acting one, so it's, it's amino acids, exactly. It's not the, the native growth hormone, which is like 44 amino acids. But Greenspan, who is the main researcher from Harvard doing the studies, is stage three NDA approved. I mean, this company um, is out of Toronto. I've invested in that company because I believe this guy is going to, in a year or two, is going is, is to, it's going to be approved. And once you approve it in HIV patients for, for fat, visceral fat, yes. then you've got a good, you've got a, something really good for the general public. Yeah. And this is going to be, so it's be off label because you're not HIV, but as off label, Actually, there's a deal been made already between Serono, which made Sizen, which was for HIV, and Serono is now owned by Merck, with their genics, that they're going to distribute this product once it's FDA approved to the United States. That should be coming out soon, and that's going to be really interesting. Now, the other thing is there's also IGF-1, which is Incrolex and Iplex. Incrolex is just IGF-1. That's approved by the FDA. I, the IPLEX, which is Insomed, is IGF-1 plus IGF growth hormone BP-3, which is safer because IGF BP-3 is anti-carcinogenic. But if you take that with growth hormone together, you're going to get some profound effects on people. But people aren't using it because it's expensive. They don't know about it and whatever. But I think the biggest promise to me for weight loss from a biochemical point of view is uh, Tessamorlin by a company called Therogenics. Thank you. I was... Um I am eagerly waiting for that to be released. I think George you know, spoke well, about this. Carlos and I, by the way, for the benefit of the audience, were involved in a short clinical trial of one of these growth hormone releasing hormones, or somatomedin, um, because when you administer growth hormone by injection, I am directly into the body, you're giving a pharmacological dose. Mm -hmm. And it's not really being released in the physiological way that it typically does in deep sleep in a pulsatile fashion, um, usually three or four times during the night. And if you act at the level of the hypothalamus above the pituitary, you get a much more natural response. And a lot of the side effects 
uh, people taking too much growth hormone, like acromegaly, type side effects of carpal tunnel, uh, I don't know, lots of other uh, problems can arise where you have to adjust the dose. And we have people like uh, Tom Pearls uh, writing articles in JAMA saying this <laughs> growth hormone stuff should be um, in, what is it, uh, class three? Well, it's linked to the steroid. Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Wait, 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 Time out. Time yes. Out. Let me Go see. ahead. Okay. You know, I keep hearing this over and over again. This thing with acromegaly is based on the model of acromegaly. Yes. People who inject growth hormone do not develop acromegaly. They don't develop carpal tunnel syndrome if injected in the right dose. In the right dose. In the right, but, but most people who are taking it are taking the right dose. The only people who have problems with it are people who are uh, body lifters who may be injecting three and four units a day. It's a minority of people who are doing this therapeutically, and it's a bad model. This is where it gets the bad name. This is why growth hormone becomes politicized, because you use these bad examples, you use all the few studies that have shown really bad side effects. Most studies have shown tremendous effect from growth hormone. The, the, the far benefits, but you have to use it in small dosages. But you should not say that it causes acromegaly. It does not cause that. Have you ever seen that? Well, I personally not. None of us, I, I none of us have seen this. Okay. But Tom Pearls, nevertheless, who has a vested interest uh, in sports medicine and you know, attacking the athletes who have used growth hormone and anabolic steroids uh, as performance enhancement drugs, um, you know, is attacking the entire field of growth hormone uh, outside, I guess, its original FDA approved indication, which is for pediatric dwarfism or AIDS wasting. Um, and so there is a controversy within the medical establishment about this. And I think that the Cenogenics people who have the best track record of experience um, in numbers of cases shows that in general, when used properly, growth hormone is good for you. My point that I wanted to make with Carlos is that maybe some of the newer drugs, the growth hormone releasing hormone drugs, will be even better. Regarding sports, I mean, there's really no data to show, or very little data to show, that growth hormone enhances sports performance. There's one paper by Dr. Ho, Australia, a very good growth hormone scientist, a very good researcher, showed if you combine growth hormone with testosterone, you might get some benefit, and, and ergogenic benefit. Where the benefit, I think, comes from is the recovery. It's all about recovery. Growth hormone speeds recovery. I mean, this is, it's probably, that is the mechanism of why athletes like growth hormone. It's through the recovery mechanism. They're getting, you know, these people are stressed out. They're probably not getting uh, stage three, four sleep when, these are young folks. And I went to this growth hormone summit we had at, at uh, UCLA, and it was all about how to detect growth hormone doping because all, of all the growth hormone has, they've been testing growth hormone at, at the at Greek Olympics, in Beijing, et cetera. Nobody tested positive. Now, the latest test will be a urine test, which is pretty close to being developed, which will look at growth hormone isomers. There's like 25, or I think 22, 20 kilodalton size isomers of growth hormone we make, 22 being the ones commercially that we use. However, if you get a ratio in the urine of this abnormal ratio, then you're going to be busted. Secondly, the particle is so small, they have to use nanotechnology to amplify the amount of growth hormone isomers to be able to make it, and that's being, a German company is working on that. Don Catlin used to be head of the IOC lab at UCLA is working on that as well privately. That'll be coming shortly. So we will maybe see, I don't know, at some point, some athletes being busted for growth hormone abuse. But it's not what they think it is in terms of ergogenicity. You know, in, uh, in stem cells, um, the movie in you showed there, and the, all the, the that was done, of course, with adult stem cells. <clears throat> and it's a bit of a procedure to take them out, grow them for six weeks, and put them back. So what, ideally, what you want is a, a bank of, of stem cells that, that, like a drug, that you can, when you need need them, you can, the doctor can prescribe it, and you use it. Um, 
that gets back to embryonic stem cells is really, really my question, is can these types of things with adult stem cells uh, really be that useful, and, and particularly what happened in that case uh, was that those cells were dividing, and you saw them divide there in the Petri dish, they're aging and their telomeres are getting shorter. So you're, you're, you, while you're repairing the heart, that's fine, except that you're repairing it with not only cells of the same age of the, the patient you started with, but older cells even than that. And that would not be the case if you, had, if you started with embryonic stem cells that were coached into cardiomyocytes uh, or whatever. 